Listen, sometimes you gotta train your Pokemon the opposite of the way people expect. Because catching opponents off guard is fun, and it's also just cool to see Pokemon do stuff that they don't really do all the time. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I think it might be broken, but I'm not sure. I am on my way to 300k though, so if you could test out that button, it would help out a lot. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So, my opponent is going to lead off with their Weavile, as I decide to toss out old Skinny Legs, the Punching Glove Flamingo. And you'll notice I don't have any nicknames on this team, and that is because I forgot. I built this team quickly, and I was like, I just wanted to try it out, and now I don't have any nicknames. But that's not usually how I roll, but we're going with it today. So, I go for the U-turn on the turn one. This is Choice Scarf Flamingo. I'll tell you what, people are sleeping on my Amigo here. With the Choice Scarf, you can outspeed like everything in the tier, and with the dual stab of Close Combat and Brave Bird, it's, it's a force to be reckoned with, but I do have an answer to switch into Weavile, and that comes in the form of Fuzzy Crab. And I just really wanted to try out Crabomitable here, so I can switch into an Icicle Crash easily, and then either force it out or just get the knockout with a Drain Punch, so that's exactly what I do. As they stay in, go for another Icicle Crash, and of course, Crabomitable just does not help his own case, flinches, and now I'm put in a position where I basically just need to sack this thing off, because now you're slow and he's useless, and it's pretty much what this thing does. But I am determined to get this Mon to be good. So I'm tuck him in the old back pocket for later. And now I at least get a free switch in. So I decide to bring in the red card Fortress. Now if you're unfamiliar with the red card hold item, essentially if the opponent makes physical contact with you, uh, I hold up my red card and they have to switch out. So I'm hoping maybe the Weavile stays in here, touches me, and then I can Volt Switch on whatever comes in. It turns out they actually end up switching into the Espeon. A lot of the time you'll see these come in on Pokemon that are expected to go for hazards. I do not click the Stealth Rock because I do know I do not want my ass to get Magic Bounced on. So I go for the Volt Switch instead. And now I get a little bit of momentum on what I want to bring in against this. So Tyranitar is the lad that comes in ready to be an absolute menace. So he comes in looking like Godzilla, however, I'm about three and a half feet tall, a short king's out here, and I go for a Dark Pulse. Now this is Choice Specs Special Attacking Tyranitar, and it turns out the kitty cat over here expects a physical attack, because you're looking at Tyranitar, you're thinking, that thing is for sure gonna earthquake my ass or crunch or something like that. However, through the reflect, I don't give a shit, I go for the special attack, and Choice Specs Tyranitar logs its first clean kill. So. That's the idea with this Tyranitar, catching people off guard expecting physical attacks, and that could not have worked better, and that they literally went for the Reflect there. So, that definitely worked out pretty nice, and now I'm thinking, let's keep these good vibes rolling, Tyranitar. I'm gonna go for the Ghost Terra, put the old Ghosty on my head, because I know that this Weavile is likely gonna go for the Low Kick here. I can just go right through me, and then I can just knock it out again with a Dark Pulse, even though it's not very effective, this thing is weak as hell, and you know, I got my sweet specs on. So. He does end up going for the low kick here, goes right through me, and then the Dark Pulse does finish off the Weavile, which is actually good because without Kerbomitable, I don't have much that wants to wants to deal with that. So down goes the Weavile, looking naked in pink, and Tyranitar is absolutely going on a nice little rampage here. However, in comes the freaking Peacock thing. Comes in stepping around with his weird toes. I don't like it, so I figure I have to get my ass out of here. I, I, I can't, you know, stay in and go for a not very effective attack. So I decide to switch into slacking. Now I'm looking at the matchup thinking, damn, this uh, this duck actually does fuck up my team and I do not have the greatest matchup here. So I bring in slacking with the idea that I can bait potentially a close combat and then I can try to bring back in Tyranitar on the fighting move now and then you'd be able to switch my move and go for something like an Earth Power, get some pretty decent damage and at least chip it to the point where I should be able to take care of this thing. So. That is exactly what I do. I bring in Tyranitar, expecting, thinking that close combat has to be coming here. Unfortunately for me, it actually ends up going for the Swords Dance. So I definitely should have just stayed in and Giga Impact that bitch into the Shadow Realm, but now I found myself in a bad position. But if you'll remember, I have an answer to this thing, and that comes in the form of one red rectangle. I do have the, uh, the Fortress with the red card, and I'm thinking I could just switch in Fortress here. It does have a speed boost, it's got that Swords Dance, I bring in Fortress, hold up the red card, and get this thing out of here for a problem to deal with later. So that's what I do, I bring in the Fortress, red card is going to activate on the Aqua Step here, and then Fortress is basically going to be like, hey, I'm going to need you to uh, get the hell out of here. I hold up the red card, and that forces this thing to switch out. It's still going to be a problem for later, uh, but I do believe I can handle it a little bit better than I, I worked that one out. So. It's going to end up bringing in the low kicks. Now, this is a Pokemon you honestly generally hate to see because with the choice band and a first impression, it kills like everything. And not to mention, if it goes for the bug Terra, there's truly like nothing that can live that. So I'm just going to stay in here. Fortress is going to try to go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock. I should be able to live at least one attack from this thing. As we do see, it's going to go for that bug Terra. So now it's got extra boosted stab. 
And most of the time you see these things, they are going to be choice banned. So, get some little extra antennas on his head and ends up going for the U-turn. However, Fortress is not only a nut, he's a wall nut. And I end up living that nice and easy. This does allow me to set up the Stealth Rock. I mostly just want to set up the Stealth Rock to uh, punish that low kick switching in. It's going to take a good old chunk. Uh, so they decide to bring in the Tauros here. It's going to be the Tauros Fire, which you can tell because of the tiny ass little slits on his mane. I, when you know what really grinds my gears? They should have made these Tauros forms keep the color of their horns when they attack. Like, if this thing had red glowing horns, it'd be way sicker. But I don't know why they, they did us like that. But I decided to stay in here. There's nothing I can really do. It does go for the Raging Bull there with the cool-ass the cool -ass horns. Uh, and that does take care of Fortress. But I was able to block the sweep and set up my Stealth Rock. So I'm feeling pretty good. And now I get a free switch. So I decided to bring back in Tyranitar. I know that as a ghost type, I'm feeling like I can definitely handle anything this thing wants to throw at me. And uh, I can actually just go right for an Earth Power. Locking myself into Earth Power, even though it's not Stab. Still going to do a lot of damage. Keep in mind, there is still the Reflect Up, which is doing nothing. So, uh, this thing stays in, goes for that Raging Bull. You're actually able to see that I don't have much investment in uh, speed on this thing. And instead, have full HP, which allows me to tank that hit real nice. And then one hit KO his ass with an Earth Power. As now, the non-existent ass Reflect goes away. So, um... They actually, they probably had to stay in there to try to get some chip on Tyranitar, pretty much for low kicks to try to do as much damage as possible. Because this thing, as a ghost type, it actually is positioned pretty well against their team. That's why I tried to commit to the Terra early, because they have stuff like the Mouse Hold. It was good against Tauros, it was good against Weavile. Uh, so just having Ghost Tyranitar really helped me out there. So I decided to switch into uh, the Flamigo, as this thing actually ends up going for the U-turn. I was kind of afraid of something like... Uh, the Sucker Punch, but they probably know that I'm Choice Specs at this point if I was able to knock out uh, the Tauros in one hit, so U-Turn's a nice play there, however, they don't have much that they can bring into because I am fast as shit in my little scarf and my skinny neck and legs and we are ready to, you know, I see this mouse family but I'll tell you what, Flamigo does not give a shit about your family I punch you each individually right in the face and that does take care of <laughs> the mouse hold, so Doing a little population control out here to call me the, the pest control flamingo. And uh, now they get a free switch. So they're down to low kicks and their Kukwevil. And in comes the low kicks who's taken that stealth rock damage nicely. But it's looking like I'm in a position where I know I can outspeed this thing and go for a close combat if it doesn't go for the first impression. However, I believe close combat does like 40%. So it's not quite going to be a kill. And I do want to save uh, the scarf flamingo for later. Plus, I have an answer as a switch into this. And that's going to be... Salamence, whose fat ass can come in, intimidate it, drop that attack one stage, and then hopefully take an attack nicely. Does go for that first impression here, um, and that, even through the intimidate, does so much damage, which is actually insane. So, uh, the good news about this thing going for the first impression is that if it's holding the choice band item, it has to do it again, and they can't really afford to switch here. So, unfortunately for them, they have to stay in, go for that first impression, it does not work that time, and that is, that's why we hate choice band on first impression it can work really well but if you don't if you run out of options you're gonna have a bad time so salamence goes ahead and yells at it that's also gonna activate my throat spray as my throat was feeling a little a little hoarse but now i got that spray feeling good boost the special attack a nice little stage there and now the last pokemon is going to be the dancing duck and salamence should be able to outspeed this thing and then grab a nice little kill especially with that special attack boost so I'm going to go for the nice and powerful Air Slash here, as this thing actually ends up going for the Aqua Jet. Gets the critical hit, but Salamence does not care, because look at how thick this thing is, just levitating, barely floating his wings. And the Air Slash does take care of the final mod. So that is going to be the end of the match. I just thought that was a fun one, kind of to be able to showcase uh, some interesting stuff on this team, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment, because I do read all the comments and I enjoy all the support, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.